Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. Today is March 10th, 2023. This is the Legislative Committee of the Colorado Forest Health Council. We are meeting today um, to discuss a couple of items and um, let's go ahead and do our roll call. Thank you, Courtney. Good morning, Samantha Albert. Present, sorry y'all, I'm on the phone today. Great. Um, Christy Belton. Commissioner Hillary Cooper. Pat Dorsey. Yep. I heard from Director McCombs that he wasn't going to be able to make it today. Commissioner Jody Shattuck McNally. Here. Mark Morgan. Here. Julie Stencil. Here. And Sylvan Weiskunk. Okay, so we do have quorum today. Great. Thank you all. Um, so let's quickly approve the minutes because I know Daphne, I'm going to make a change in the agenda and move Daphne up um, after our approval of the minutes. And so has anyone um, have any additions or edits or changes to the minutes? I would welcome a motion. I'd move to approve the minutes. Is there second. A Thank you, Pat. So we have a first and a second motion on the table. Any further discussion? Wonderful. Well, all those in favor, aye. 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 Great, minutes are approved. So we're gonna go ahead and move up our agenda item to get an update on other legislation that we're um, monitoring and the two bills that um, we have, uh, the full forest council, council has um, voted to approve. And so Daphne, you can let us know kind of what's happening um, at the Capitol, which I'm sure is a lot and it's a little chaotic, I'm sure. So you're, the floor is yours. Perfect. Well, good morning and thank you, uh, Commissioner Shattuck McNally and all of you for the time this morning for accommodating me and moving the schedule all around. Definitely has been hectic uh, to give you a sense of what I mean by that, that the House uh, debated gun bills on the floor until 7 a.m. this morning. So um, they, <laughs> yeah, it was a long night. Um, and so they are actually going to be convening again on Saturday. Um, it's pretty early in the session for uh, for them to be convening on Saturday, but just kind of demonstrates um, how much work is left to do and how we're already kind of feeling the crunch of the 60 days left. Um, that's another kind of status update. This week marks the halfway point of the session. So we've got 60 days left and a lot of work left to do. Um, there's about 500 bills in the system right now um, that have been introduced. Um, some of those have been PI'd, but about 500 bills total which means we've got anywhere between, you know, about 100 to 200 bills left to go. Um, I don't have too many updates this morning, so I'll run through it pretty quickly. Um, one new bill that I just wanted to put on your radar is the CWCB, the Water Conservation Board Water Projects Bill. Um, this is an annual bill that DNR uh, runs that um, really just provides an appropriation for um, water projects uh, that have been uh, identified and prioritized. So uh, this year we're hoping to secure 12.6 million um, for those water projects. Uh, the bill draft lays out all of the projects that that uh, would go to. And so that one um, was recently introduced and will be up for its first uh, committee hearing next week. Um, as far as bills that are already on the council's radar, um, I believe I mentioned the wildland urban interface uh, code bill. Um, that one is up for um, its first hearing next Thursday on the 16th. Um, and then a lot of the bills that you all are tracking, including Senate Bill 5, um, the forestry workforce bill, House Bill 1018, the timber industry workforce bill, House Bill 1060, the tree nursery bill, um, House Bill 1069, the biochar study bill, all of those are waiting for a, a hearing in the appropriations committee, which typically won't happen until after the long bill um, is introduced later this month. Um, so the only thing I, I wanted to really mention um, is the wildfire mitigation investment package on the budget side of things. 
Um, so this isn't a bill, but it's a budget decision item that is um, within DNR, but also spans across the, the State Forest Service and the Division of Fire Prevention and Control um, in the Department of Public Safety. It's a total of $9 million. Um, so the way that that's broken out is $2 million continuously appropriated to the Mitigation Capacity Development Fund that would go to CoSWAP. Um, $4 million continuously appropriated to the Healthy Forest Vibrant Communities Fund that would go towards public education and outreach, as well as some uh, mitigation projects on federal lands. Um, $1 million continuously appropriate, appropriated, excuse me, to the Forest um, Restoration and Wildfire Mitigation um, Grant Program, or FORWORM. And then the last $2 million would go to a new home hardening fund. Um, so of that $9 million total, um, unfortunately, the JBC staff recommendation was to approve $2 million of the $9 million, um, specifically a one-time increase to the Healthy Forest Fund um, as part of the uh, Good Neighbor Authority program to um, do those, those projects on federal lands and, and uh, leverage some federal uh, funds that are available um, for that purpose. So that means that staff is recommend, recommending denial of a majority of this request. The JBC had an initial conversation on this. They delayed action, um, and in fact, they were supposed to take it back up today. Um, however, with the, um, with the Senate now taking up uh, gun bills today, it's unlikely, I would say, that they will convene at all, that the JBC will convene at all. Um, but that'll either come up later today or early next week. Um, we are anticipating the JBC may approve the staff recommendation for the $2 million, but they also indicated wanting to do some sort of set aside for the home hardening component. Um, I believe you guys might recall uh, earlier this session, House Bill 1096 was introduced by Representative Snyder. That was a, um, a, a wildfire resilient home bill that would have been kind of a public education and incentive program for home hardening efforts. That one was postponed indefinitely, um, but Representative Snyder indicated that he was hoping to bring a late bill um, forward later this session that could serve as the vehicle for this set aside that uh, the JBC alluded to. So. There's a lot of moving parts there, um, but I just wanted to let you know where that where that budget package is, um, and I'm happy to take any questions on that or any of the bills that I mentioned. Thank you, Courtney. Is this um, something that, with all those details, that was a lot of details. Um, I ask you this, but at your, I know things change, but or maybe Courtney can just to kind of brief bullet points on some of these things because that was a lot of information. No, no, no offense, but I'm like, well, there's a lot to keep track of for me, um, at least to have, um, you know, especially with what you mentioned about the JBC and stuff. So I, I don't know if, I don't know if you have notes, it would be great to just have, even if it's just really brief bullet points to help us. I don't know if anyone else felt that way, but it was just a lot for, for me to kind of um, process. So, but well done. Any questions? Morgan. Did you recognize me? Yes, I did, Mr. Morgan. Okay, I'm sorry. No, that's uh, fine. That was the exact same thing I was coming to. I was writing as fast as I could write there, <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm, I wasn't keeping up by any means. And uh, so the uh, staff recommended for the $2 million on the co-swap or on the home hardening? Neither, actually. The staff recommendation is denial for both of those pieces, but to approve um, the $2 million for um, those those projects on federal lands, the mitigation projects on federal lands. Um, so the, the forest health? So is that would be, work? yeah, so that would be through the Healthy Forests and Vibrant Communities Fund. Okay. And this work is done on on federal ground that's right okay so and the purpose of this money is to get the uh, feds to kick in a whole bunch more that's right yeah but you, but you guys are going to select the projects um the state is, is going to have a say in where the federal projects go but 
by putting money in it, it leverages federal money? Yes, I believe so. And I don't know if Director McCombs happen, it happens to be on the line, but this would live within the State Forest Service. So um, he could uh, provide some more information on, on how they're anticipating using those dollars. But Well, yes. my question basically is then if, if those would be done on the state side under the Good Neighbor Authority, I guess if you're going to take state money and give it to the feds to get more federal money, then it would be preferable if they were on good neighbor authority projects that would be then actually implemented by the state forest service and so you would have some control about the about the uh direction and and <clears throat> hopefully that would be used for really high priority state areas if you know if it was done through the good neighbor policy then you would be back having state foresters doing it and uh, that's I was just trying to follow the gold seam here to see what was going to happen. <clears throat> I appreciate your questions. And yes, this, this is through the Good Neighbor Authority. So I don't know if that helps to clarify kind of what that the- helps a bunch because that puts, that puts operational daily control back with the State Forest Service. Thank you. My Thank pleasure. you. Pat, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just had a question, Daphne. Are any of those bills um, that we see as a high priority in trouble? It could use some testimony. Are we good so far? Everything seems to be moving along. Everything seems to be moving along. Um, I know the the tree nursery bill has a little bit of an uphill climb because of the um, increased appropriation that they are seeking. Um, the budget scenario is really tight this year. I think the General Assembly has about $15 million of wiggle room total. Um, so if this bill is going for, you know, something in the, in the range of five to 10 million, you can imagine that it's competing with a lot of other um, legislative initiatives. So um, that's the only thing I would mention. The others, um, including Senate Bill 5, are on a good track. So on that vein, give us a head up when it's we're starting to get ready to put on our calendars to go testify on either bill. Um, and I'm, you know, um, I plan to do that as we have pointed. Um, and, 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 but I'm also thinking, you know, others can maybe um, look to sign up and bring more. So it might be a lot of us to come and back that up this time. So that sounds great. Um, yeah, and I'll certainly let you know when it's um, scheduled. I would anticipate that would either be late March or early April. Um, and sometimes, you know, uh, we can check in with the sponsor and just ask them, hey, do you want uh, testimony? If so, do you want several people or do you only want one or two and, and kind of take direction from them? Um, so once it gets calendared, we can do all of that. Sounds great. And I apologize for everybody to say, hey, how, how goes it people? I'm, I'm just uh, a little tired on a Friday. So I apologize for calling you all people, but you know what I meant. <laughs> sorry it's 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 friday so it's kind of and it's it's, it's daffy will tell you i just played a couple of bills last week it was really rough uh, <laughs> it was it was a rough time so um i'm just kind of um yeah i'll just leave that there so anyone else any questions and daffy if, is that too much to ask just for some bullet points just to help us kind of that would be great no problem i'll work with courtney to get that over to you I appreciate it very much. Any other questions? We'll let Courtney or Daphne get on to the back onto the floor. And um, it sounds like you were up. I hope you weren't up all night. So um. I was not. The legislators certainly were. I think they take turns taking naps in the back to make it through. <laughs> Well, I texted a, uh, when you said that I texted some of my friends down at the Capitol and no one's responded. So I'm assuming they're all sleeping. So <laughs> okay. wonderful watch how the sausage gets made right oh yeah 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 well um with that we'll let uh, daphne get back to uh to her doing a great job as she's been doing so thank you all see you next week thank you Daphne. okay well that's uh that was a lot of information so um the next thing we were going to do is uh just um look at the memo and see if i wrote that a couple of weeks ago um it's just we have a lot going on um and i wanted to see if anyone had any concerns about what i what was written and and so we can approve that and get that to the council and to the to the um legislators um so i would look for i know we kind of approved it but i wanted to let you guys see it again so to see what it, um 
Any comments, any questions, any concerns? No concerns. No, I thought it looked good. Thank you. And thank you, Courtney, for helping me format it. So, okay, well then, um, Courtney, do you think we need another motion? We already approved to send it. Do we just want to approve this version just to be? I think, yeah, it could be best practice just to go ahead and do it. And um, I also will just update you all that I ran it by Dan, the chair of the council, and he thought it sounded it sounded good too. So it's always nice to have like blessings at different levels. Um, it's I, right now I'd much rather get permission than to have to ask for forgiveness on any of this. So I think that's great. Uh, I know we're all laughing, but I'd much rather do that this way. So um, I'll welcome a motion to approve this this final draft and get it get this sent out to um, the sponsors and to the full council. I would move to approve this final draft to get it sent out to the sponsors and the full council. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you all. Any further discussion? Okay. Well, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well, it seems the motion is approved. Thank you all. Um, and I try to keep it as concise as I could, but we'll. I was trying to, especially for this first one, I didn't want to set a precedent that we needed to write a thesis every time. So I, I kept it to one page, I think. So that was good. So um, no worries, Christy. Just type in the in the chat if you have questions um, and just raise your hand and then type in the chat so I know you have something there. Thank you for letting me know. I'm sorry you don't have a mic, but I really appreciate you being here today. So um, I added, okay. um, yeah. Can I just say one more thing about the, the memo? Um, so CoSwap, the, the governor did sign the severance tax allocation last, this week, actually. I was like, how long ago was that? So that CoSwap funding is secure. So I'm wondering, like, when when I send this out, I might just mention that in the e body of the email that this has ch changed slightly, that this funding is actually um, secure now as opposed to just potential. Great. I think that would be fine. Okay, great. Okay. So just to honor everyone's time, um, I also added on um, council members, White Skunk um, had a quick chat with me at the end of the meeting last week, and I was so grateful for his attendance. And so I thought I'd just give him a few minutes today um, to kind of share with him about some indigenous voices and something that, you know, maybe we've tried to um, have some speakers, but we have such a great representation on our council with council member Weisskunk, I thought he could just talk to us a little bit about what he, um, what he was mentioning. And then if we want to have in a future agenda, more of a formal presentation um, to discuss, um, you know, kind of keeping in mind um, um, some of these indigenous voices and in the historical um, work by um, the tribal nations to, um, for the health of the forest. So um, council member Weisskunk, I'm gonna turn this over to you. Thanks so much for being here today. We're glad to have you. Yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, happy Friday and, you know, we're winding down the week. Some of us that are in the private sector, but some of us that are in the political arena, we work 24 seven, 365 days a year. So, and I'm going on my 18th year, I've been reelected back into the tribal council um i had a hiatus of three months but uh i'm back and i'm trying to uh, catch up uh, to speed but uh knowing the things that are going around in this community you so you know so much already so uh on the on the other side of it is um in the arena of where i'm assigned to i do a lot of the natural resource um, committees for the tribe um and being appointed by the governor to sit on this uh i hope it's the appropriate committee because it was the healthy forest council that the governor had uh appointed me to this and um the work and what i hear in our discussions are what the ute mountain ute tribe and i own i not only represent my tribe the ute mountain ute tribe but I also represent the Southern U Indian tribe in this council for this appointment. And we share uh, a great deal of uh, interest in 
whether this new legislation going through um, and being uh, that it's a state uh, fund funding source or whether it has federal implications on it, um, we the tribe would like to be informed and have that door open for us. I, I've been in my previous work, I've been in the wildland fire business for over 16 years as a regular grunt firefighter to a uh, smoke jumper and eventually taking over um, the, the Bureau of Indian Affairs uh, Fire Division in Boise, Idaho, in NIMPSI, what we call NIMPSI, the headquarters um, in uh, Boise. And then I came back to the agency here on the Ute Mountain Ute Agency and worked with federal agencies, state agencies, and in uh, our uh, pre suppression as well as suppression efforts and mitigations uh, to wildland fire initiatives for the tribes and the surrounding ag agencies, what we call the interagency uh, areas. So when I when I look at these types of projects and being a part of this um, council, um, we would like to be included in a sense to if if it doesn't really uh, pertain to us, at least that we know that there's discussions being uh, made or, or conversed to where maybe some of that could flow over uh, to the tribes and funding and initiatives. Like uh, past week or so when the workforce initiatives were, you know, getting individuals, um, whether it's a, a higher education, education in the K through 12 or other uh, educational opportunities and workforce opportunities, uh, the tribe would like to uh, curtail their programs to meet, uh, if possible, um, the standards that are set forth through the legislative process. Uh, we, um, the tribe, would like to be somewhat included. And I guess that would bring us to how do we do that? You know, how do we get that inclusion and how? Uh, the tribe needs to be uh, a player in this, um, in, in what this appointment entails. So uh, I'm excited. I'm looking for another three years of, of being, if that's how long it goes, but time will only tell. And the commitments that I make to this committee is going to be uh, 100% as, as much as I possibly can. Uh, I, I also work in the healthcare arena. Uh, I sit on another governor appointed commission task force for uh, the state of Colorado as well. So I'm really um, in uh, many areas of the state government uh, uh, for Governor Polis and his administration. So I'm really uh, elated to be a part of this and uh, I may or may not be, you know, a part of this committee, but uh, I get these emails and I, I, I'm interested in it. I, I want to know more and want to participate uh, in representing the two tribal nations within the state of Colorado. Thank you, Councilor Weisskamp. I, I do think that I think you re up for this committee. So this is a, a, a kind of a subcommittee of the Forest Health Council. And I think that you said you wanted to stay on it. So you're considered a voting member of this council of this legislative committee and of the full council. So this legislative committee, as you know, we've been meeting every two weeks to kind of work on those um, priority and legislation and report back to the full council. So we're always very glad that you're here. And and so you're, you were, uh, you're able, I don't know if you had voted on those other ones, but you're considered a voting member of this legislative committee. So we're really glad to have you here today. And I'm not sure what's the answer to your questions. Maybe that's something that Courtney can find out how we can help kind of, um, I think there was some talk about the, uh, uh, high schools having that legit that um, information about from guidance counselors about these programs and this this kind of um, career. And I don't know if that includes getting those onto the tribal nations um, schools or where we can do to. Um, I don't know what that connection is. So, um, but I'm grateful for your comments. So, if you don't mind, I see Pat has her hand raised. So, Pat, what would you um, like to say? 
first off, I'd like to congratulate you, Councilman White Skunk, for your reelection. And um, I just wanted to let you know that I am in Southwest Colorado. Your um, your support for and your um, input on the Rocky Mountain Restoration Initiative has been greatly appreciated. So I just wanted to recognize you for all you do um, on the forest down here in Southwest Colorado, as well as across the state. So good morning and thank you. You're welcome. Good morning too. Yes, congratulations on your election. And again, we're really glad to have you here. Mr. Morgan. Yes, sir. I was trying to follow and take some notes, Selwyn, but you had uh, uh, you had 16 years experience at Michigan. Yes. Yes. That's, yes. that's a hugely valuable block of experience that could really assist in uh, getting a, uh, a good format for training firefighters, which are some of what we've been working on right now. There'd be a <clears throat> trying to get the curriculum there and try to reach out to high school and, and junior college groups for this training because I have a pretty good idea what goes on at Bipsy, and uh, there's a block of experience there that we could really use and appreciate it. I'm glad to see you here. Well, you know, I, I would I would like to put a lot of my experience to work now that I'm in a different line of, of work. And um, my heart is always on the wildfire business, not not the rush or not carrying a backpack or walking. 26 miles, I, <laughs> I can leave that <laughs> for a younger person, but my knowledge in, in setting up curriculums and the training opportunities that we put together at NIMPC at the uh, National Interagent Fire uh, Center in Boise, Idaho, we were a part of uh, a lot of initiatives uh, working with high school students, job corps, uh, higher education, as well as uh, institutional facilities, penal systems, to getting those individuals uh, up and running and writing the criteria of the standard of operations for um, those types of individuals throughout the lower 48. So um, we really uh, put a lot of work and effort and we really instituted, implemented uh, the fire standard procedures for uh, American Indian indigenous uh, tribes that uh, were uh, set in a different system, but uh, had the same capabilities as uh, the regular wildland firefighters and their special units as well. So uh, I'm really excited and uh, uh, these types of things that, that come before me, I, I really put a lot of effort and I'm looking forward to uh, giving as best as I can input to what this committee is, is set out to do as well as the council. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Anyone else have any comments or questions? <clears throat> okay, so we'll move on to, uh, thank you again, council member Cal White Scum for being here today. We're very grateful for your comments. You're um, welcome. Appreciate it. We hope um, we we look forward to having a more uh, hearing more from you as we move forward. So thank you. Um, so um, I all, all we have is like new business, um, which is I just wanted to know I had gotten a um, public notice for input on some uh, a project called Black Diamond that with the for uh, U.S. United States Forest Service. I didn't know anyone else had. I guess there's an opportunity for public comment. So I encourage, I don't know if that's appropriate or not, but I just thought there's something that we could look at. Um, I don't know if it is appropriate for us to look at, but I just thought something we all could kind of do some homework on. Um, and I'm not sure if it's, um, I don't I don't know whether it is for anyone to make a public comment, but I am certainly doing some homework and gonna be providing as an individual. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of give you, um, since I didn't know if anyone was a, a um, aware of that, I just wanted to kind of, I don't know what the process is. Mr. Morgan, do you happen to know that? Your hand is raised. Uh, we had a very spirited meeting with the U.S. Forest Service yesterday for the Arapaho Roosevelt National Forest, which is where the Black Diamond Project was. And uh, uh, it was, uh, <clears throat> I think we learned a lot about it. And the, pro the project is now 
public because they were working very hard not to release anything on it. But now that it has gone public, then there can be comment and review. And so I asked for some, uh, they're supposed to be providing some overlays and some maps and some individual management cells. And any of this material that I get here, I should be getting it in the next day or two. I would be happy to share with anyone that's interested. But it's it's a very comprehensive plan for the uh, north end of of uh, the Arapaho Roosevelt National Forest, and it includes a lot of uh, of fuels management work and also a lot of pre planning for control burns and fire. They're gonna. They're looking at introducing a lot of that into the program, and so uh, anybody that has an interest, as soon as I get this material, I can send it out to you if you want. But it was a, I would call it a very spirited meeting yesterday for about three hours. But uh, any information that you want, does anybody, do you want me to provide that? Whatever I get from them. Okay, I'll be happy to make sure it gets around. Um, Pat. Yeah, I, I just had a question from a council perspective. I'm assuming this is a NEPA um, a analysis, a, either an EA or a EIS, probably an EA. And as a council, do we want to address those, knowing that they go on across the state? There could be one on the G Mug or the White River or that kind of thing. I just want to make it might be wise to spend some time thinking about how we want to address those things as a council versus individually and and commissioner shaddock maybe the right way to do it is the way that you just did which is bring it to the group and say i'm going to research it and if we think there's a nexus we we all address it i don't i don't know i just i know that we could get overrun with nepa um if we don't have some sort of a filter process no yeah. and that's exactly why i brought this up just because i i don't know whether there are other ones across the whole state but um, i just wanted to kind of and I'm not, I'm not, I don't know where our lane is here. That's why I'm bringing this up as a discussion. Um, I don't know if it's a full council lane, but I just wanted to at least kind of bring it up here. Is it something that um, if you're interested on as an individual, if you wanted to look at it, but also I don't know where our lane is and um, at least um, being aware of it, I thought was important for as a council that we understand these are going on. Um, and I didn't know if any of you had heard of it other um, otherwise, but um so that's kind of my lane is trying to see where, and I don't know whether we ask the staff um, to ask where our lane is or if we should kind of at least be aware of it. So um, Julie, I say your hands up first and then Mr. Morgan, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you brought this up and, and you know, Pat's mentioning the fact that, you know, there could be any number of NEPAs going on across the state that perhaps the, the larger council wants to be aware of. I, I think you're asking, exactly the right question which is should the larger council have a subcommittee that when these things come through that's what they're focusing on and and, and making sure that the council is raising its voice to the extent they need to as part of that process it's i don't know that it's something that council has talked about up to this point but it seems <laughs> like it's it's such a natural and obvious tie to the forest health conversation that it, it, I think it's worth mentioning for sure. Mr. Morgan. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that makes this unique is the forest services efforts to, uh, they're planning on a much larger scale than they have in the past. This, the EAs for like Black Diamond are uh, 100,000 acres at a time, which is kind of unprecedented in our area. So they're, they're, they're really large EAs, they're very inclusive and they're very long-term. And I don't know that that's good or bad. It might be really good. It might give them some flexibility, but what it, what as you're just talking about, this is gonna craft their policy and their operational abilities on a large scale for a long time. So and oftentimes in the past, the EAs were much more focused and smaller and so this kind of amounts to a new way of doing business. And uh, I think it deserves following. I'm, I, it's gonna be pretty critical to what happens in our state for quite a while on a pretty big scale. And So 
so I have an idea. Do we, along with our legislative update and then Courtney typing in saying um, this has been updated with the um, uh, the, the uh, severance tax, um, code, is it codified basically, I guess we would say, or at least um, firmed up or approved. Do we just pose this question to the full council in that report? Um, or what do we do here, Courtney? Yeah, that's a good question. Does anybody know the timeline for public comment or input on this? Let me look. Process just because I would be a little maybe wary to pose such a big question in an email to the council unless we're just flagging it for the next council meeting. Um, I think this could be like an, a whole agenda item at the May meeting, but if you could check on the timeline, that'd be great. I am also happy to put it in the email just to gather information from um, people, see if anyone is. Mine says comments accepted until September 20, whoops, that's not it. Um, that's an old one. Um, hold on. Um, March, it will start March 4th and it has a 30 day timeline. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought that was the case, but I wasn't sure. I didn't want to comment. Okay, well then. Hmm. Commissioner Shattuck, does it say at the top of that that it's a programmatic EA or does it just say it's an EA? Um, a, a programmatic EA usually um, gives the Forest Service some flexibility and includes a lot of different projects areas instead of being a 100 acre project or something. So it said a legal notice was published today in the Colorado for the opportunity to comment on the Black Diamond Landscape Resiliency and Risk Reduction Project Preliminary EA. This initiates environmental assessment. This initiates a 30-day comment period, which follows September 2022 scoping period when the Forest Service received great input from those interested in the project. And this started on March 4th. So I don't think that the council will be able to take any sort of position or make any sort of comments on this because it won't have a chance to, to meet. But okay. I think it makes a lot of sense to put this on the agenda anyway. So going forward, we can have a plan of action for if we want to address or make comments on NEPA. I think sharing it in the email so that council members are aware that this is is happening and then they can have the opportunity to make comments as individuals makes sense as you all said this is very important for forest health in the state mr morgan i think courtney that's exactly right in the sense that provide the information and provide the knowledge of what's going on and then you will have to see if it fits locally appropriate for you uh what <clears throat> what a lot of this program is for this current EA is that they're trying to develop a great deal of uh of uh fuels breaks so that they can compartmentalize the forest enough to where they can then determine whether they're going to control burn or harvest or what their plan is but basically that's the way the plan lays out and uh i would see no way that we could act uh as a subcommittee or as a uh, <clears throat> uh, council as a whole. But I think getting that knowledge out there, and I asked for some specific material yesterday that they used to develop it. And that's what I was in hopes, you know, you're going the overall comment will be the overall plan, but I asked for specifically for the overlay maps. So you could see what's gonna happen right in your neighborhood or what they had planned for that area so and i think as these go forward ones that apply to your area within the state then you might want to be on top of it what i found interesting was that this is a, a this is planning on a large scale for a long time period and they were definitely putting their resources they were allocating their resources so uh it's uh i guess courtney if any information you got and any information that I get that anybody wants from me, I'd be happy to. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Morgan. Pat. 
You know, I promise I'll be quiet after this. I uh, <laughs> I wonder too if there's any value in providing kind of a I don't want to call it a template, but like a a, a template that has a smorgasbord of um, goals for the Forest Health Council, best practices, that kind of thing, so that if somebody, um, a Larimer County or a Morgan Timber or a, a National Wild Turkey Federation wants to comment on a project, um, there there's a list of of things that you could draw from and put into that letter on an EA, um, and there be there would be some consistency that we'd be supporting the. The goals of the Forest Health Council and, and probably our our organizations as well. And I think about things like community wildfire risk, um, you know, clean water, all of that kind of stuff. And if there's no interest in doing that, I'm I'm totally okay with it. I don't know that people need that kind of support, but it would be there if they wanted it. Courtney, would you like to address that? Because we would be making comments as individual on this as individual mem as individuals under other hats and not anything associated with the Forest Health Council. But I do think this would be important to maybe add to the, and my, my thought is maybe at least have this conversation as a full council for what we do going forward, because this is sounds pretty um, enormous um, and related to what we're doing, so. Yeah, I think I would agree with what you said, Jody. of maybe the council won't be able to provide any um, materials for for this one but if that's something that the full council decides at the next meeting that they want to be more engaged and they want to have tools for council members to engage and maybe there wants to be a committee i think i think this could be really big and as you said there's a there's a huge opportunity for impact but yeah pat i'm not sure if we'd be able to pull that together in 30 days and then also like would it need to be approved i feel like there's kind of more questions there Morgan. Yes, uh, Pat, I think in a lot of ways, that's a great idea and any kind of a template. I think the big thing here is that we're going to have to act individually and that's fine. But anywhere we get information and we learn and, and, and these situations where I really learn is other people facing similar situations, their knowledge that they develop. I'm, I'm always interested in that because that just helps you strengthen your your uh, proposals or suggestions or your format. So the, the more of them that you can compare side by side, the more effective you're going to be in doing it. So I think I understand where you're trying to go. You're looking for a checklist format. And I would be very interested in that, not so much necessarily that we're going to go out and do this for this project or the next project, but I would, I think that's a great idea. Thank you for that um, input, and I agree. I think um, definitely this is something to have as a, a discussion. And um, I've been doing my homework and um, trying to figure out how I'm going to quickly um, get my comments in as a since they contacted me as a commissioner. So I'm trying to do my part, but I'll be doing that as Limerick County Commissioner. So just to be very clear. I'll be staying with my my only that hat on. So, um, and I have staff working on that with me. So anyway, um, any other new, any other further discussion on this? Cause I wanna honor everyone's time and I'm gonna get on to my, I'm down here in Denver attending a women's conference and gonna meet a NASA, a NASA astronaut. So I wanna um, jump on to that. So it's kind of exciting. Yeah, it's kind of fun. So um, anyway, anyone um, have any uh, um, other things they'd like to add or new business? So I think we have our, in two weeks, um, we will have uh, our meeting and we have the agenda item prior to the legislative update. And um, and then I think Courtney might have some um, feedback on the survey. I wanna encourage you all to fill out that survey today, sooner the better and that way to the last minute. I did meet with um, a lot of the partners working on some of this work in my county for our next meeting. And I know um, they're really excited and they think they can pull together a pretty informative tour in the retreat and stuff, but there's a lot we could do. And so I just wanted to encourage you all to fill out the survey and as soon as possible for Courtney's help. And, and uh, I think she said at least six people have filled it out. So 
we can get a lot more sooner the better it makes her job easier so she's not having to compile it all at the end um and so i look forward to um hopefully seeing you all so courtney i just wanted to let you know that mr morgan and, and it sounds like matt mccombs now might have a a conflict there's some kind of force a national force association thing happening in alamosis so mm -hmm. i thought i'd let you and him kind of discuss that since um that's not in my purview but i know he had some concerns now so um anyway with that any other further business questions concerns for new business okay so i will welcome a motion to adjourn the meeting and thank you all for being here today what a great discussion I move to adjourn. Second. All right, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Awesome. Thank you. I'll have a great weekend. See you next time. Uh, Mr. Morgan, may you want to stay on and talk to Courtney? And I'm going to head down the road and have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, all. Bye.